Right, so before we go out for our adventure in Yogyakarta, I just want to show you the, the hostel that I'm in. This is it. There's a pool, shoes, hammocks, and there's dorms and a couple of private rooms. There's the shower and more toilets, sinks, lockers as well. And we come up to the dorm. This is the dorms. So you don't get any blankets or anything. It's just a mosquito net and a pillow. So yeah, very basic. This is 50,000 rupee a night. So that's what, like £2.50? So hardly anything, you get hardly anything. Great people here. This is Yez Yez Hostel. Let's go into the city. So many of these little streets and there's bikes just going straight through them at quite fast speeds, so just watch out. And now we're at the Yogyakarta Palace. So ticket is 25,000 rupees, so that's like just over one pound. So behind me is a lot of the artifacts that the old ruler king, I think it was, had. Got stands here, which look like they're set up for mics. So I don't know if they do performances here. That'd be quite an interesting thing to come see. Just lots and lots of artifacts. So I'm assuming this is a little model of what it was like when it was destroyed but they've clearly restored it quite well. The amazing thing is they're not just instruments, they're actually pieces of art. This would have been used to carry dignitaries or for things like royal weddings, uh, to take them to ceremonies, those kind of things. Very different architecture to many of the places I've been in so far in that this is all open, like all open, and clearly it's because it's, because it's very, very hot. So it makes a lot of sense. But it's just interesting that there's almost nothing closing places off. There are a few places which seem like private rooms, but most of it is left completely open. Beautiful stained glass. behind me is the private bank for the royals and apparently it's still open and running today. So what, from what I can see both, and it's a sultan here, not a king or an emperor, the sultan here and generally in Indonesia, they get a lot of support from Germany, which I'm not quite too sure why that is. I've not seen any explanation. Part of the palace is a museum about the, I think it's the Sultan's father, who was quite a major figure from what I can tell. He was the leader on the sports commission, I think, from what I understand. And he got loads of awards and medals and things like that. Things to do with scouts here. Look, it's a scout shirt. Looks like there's a place where they're doing restoration and conservation. As you do, just have a cannon in your back garden. So, this room is talking about all the different spices in Indonesia and how they're used for different medicinal purposes, or for diplomacy, or to even just to help with their skin. Very interesting, it smells great to her. They also talk about some of the trees they use in their construction, and there's a lot about the superstitions of the different types of branches and things, and what they'll mean for the owners of the tree. This section is just a general history and just lots of information about Yogyakarta. Very interesting, and it's part of the ticket anyway, so definitely coming out. It's so interesting, the, the plants around here in the palace weren't just practical use for building materials and herbs and medicines, they were also used as games for the kids, so like when they finished studying they could use the plants to play different games. Shit, there's more to gum. 
so there's actually not much in this last part it's just people doing construction so maybe in the future it might be something quite cool but now not so much so I think that's the midday prayers It's ridiculous, I'm trying to find some lunch but everywhere is closed because it's Ramadan. Can we not just, can't you just put aside your superstition to let people actually have some food? Some lunch, excellent. Don't know why it's only just hit me, but that, that food was less than a pound. That was 17,000 rupiah. That's less than a, fucking, what? That's less than a pound for all that food. Oh. Always look at where the locals are going, it'll be cheaper and better food. Amazing. Bear in mind that in Jogjakarta, lots of things close very early. The palace closes at 2 and the museum I'm going to now closes at 3. There are lots of signs up here for ASEAN 2023. I'm assuming that's because they're hosting it. This is Vrenberg, it used to be a Dutch fortress when they were colonists here, but now it's been turned into a museum. Tickets are 10,000 rupiah, so that's like 50p. They've got a little route to start, so this is apparently the first place. Oh, and it's aircon. And to start here, because you know, one and down there is like 11, so yeah. my math skills are kind of picking this up. Indonesian independence was announced on August the 17th, 1945, and it was after the Dutch had colonized and then Japanese came and colonized during World War II. And to do that, what they did is when they, specifically in Yogyakarta, when they walked in, they actually had a picture of, I'm pretty sure, the Dutch Queen, and they were stabbing it with a bayonet and saying that Japan and Indonesia were the same. But then obviously they just invaded and took over the land. This part features a lot about the currency in Indonesia and how it has changed through the different colonial periods with the Spaniards and the Portuguese first coming over and not necessarily colonizing, but starting with trade and then the Dutch colonizing and the Japanese colonizing and after a while, Indonesia having their own currency. And so at one point there were so many assassination attempts on the Sultan and just Jakarta in general. They decided to move the capital to Jakarta. In their independence, they had no air force army, no military really. And so they did build an air force, but they had hardly any weapons. And so factories just tried using anything. They used telephone poles to, to like be the barrel for a cannon. West Java was occupied by the Dutch after a lot of the settlements happened uh, after World War II. There are, you can see here, there's a lot of conflict between where is identified as um, the nation of Indonesia and a lot of that was that the Dutch claimed different parts. So in part, the west of Java was uh, ruled by the Dutch and so the Indonesian army base had to be moved to Jogjakarta Jog from uh, Jakarta. So the first general elections of Indonesia were held between July 16th and 10th November in 1951 and so they spanned over quite a long period of time because they were electing different types of people to a lot of different offices. So this section is a lot about the inauguration of their first president and the acts that he did, such as signing their independence and things like that. This is the former presidential palace because Jogjakarta was the first and now former capital of Indonesia. Quite grand, don't know what exactly it's used for today. So this is the Unit Galleria Museum. It's like a heritage centre for both Yogyakarta and for Java itself. They've actually got copies of skulls that were found in Indonesia of early humans. So there are many inscriptions that they have around here which teach them, teach you about what the language was like in the past, what kind of social structure and systems they had. So it shows that as Islam spread throughout Indonesia in general and especially Java, the artwork changed as well. Batik is a textile technique, craft, using wax resistant something and colour dyeing. 
So you can even have it as clothes. Video performance here of different stories. Now in the second new building of the museum, which is, well, we'll find, we'll find out, but it's included in the ticket. This first part is about transportation from bikes to horses and carts to these slangan and trains. We now come to the performing arts part with performances and artwork and music. I mean, this is quite clearly all about the weapons. have many of these cloths which are all meant to tell different stories and different parts of life. More of these basic artworks. This is setting up a formal banquet and it's just showing how the Javanese culture and the European culture mixed with colonialism. This museum closes at four so we're gonna go now. It's Ramadan at the moment so a lot of things are closed and one of those things is the performances such as the puppet shows uh, I think we can see how they make some of the puppets. The buffalo. Buffalo skin. Yeah, is this from the water? Is the water buffalo? Okay. Yeah, and you so make the puppets for yeah. the shows. This is the show. This you can tap them. The carving is become like this. Here with the twenty two. This is for the hammer here. Yeah. And then step by step, so it's the letter become art. So you can see the closer after, and then we polish. Eh? With the with the sand pepper, so like this, yeah. yeah. So it's the skin become smooth, eh? Nice. Yeah, and then the things like this. This is the the baruna. Ah, oh, very nice. So this is the cut of the ocean. So for the painting, everything we don't need paint. We need from the cat hair. I mean, for the brush, eh? Yeah. Cat hair brush. So that was really nice of him to show me all that stuff, but he was trying to get me to buy something from that. So just learning just to go and see this thing, see the opportunity and just learn to say no. Just taking a little bike trip, which by the way is the best way to see any place. The famous... The famous one, Pecha. Pecha. Yeah. To get anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Horse-drawn carriage. Yeah. These are usually about 100,000 rupiah to take you around for 20 minutes. So it's about... Five, five pounds? Yeah. But this is what we're really here for. Mario Poro. It's the main street in Jogjakarta. So you got loads of different nice shops. Which is one of the big, big attractions here. Oh, only today? Only today. Okay, so this is, this is usually open, but today it's closed. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Is this the entrance? Or is it just another street? Chinese, it must be Chinese. Ah, the Chinatown. Uh, ah, China. yeah, Chinatown, of course. Yes. Okay. Okay. Famous okay. Famous Around. Wrong, That's wrong. better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's an amazing mosque. Yes. Right in the middle of, as well. Yeah. A couple of these big stores on this street selling batik, which is the texture it's the it's the style of batik no that is a batik yeah, yeah this but is it's, all it's batik. the style this is batik all yeah. is batik all of this batik which i showed in the museum symbol of love walk down china chinatown it's uh, jackfruit jackfruit yeah. oh, okay yes kudang kudak 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 nasi kudak that was really nice. There's a great mixture of spiciness and sweetness yes, and a bit yes. of savouriness. That was jackfruit, wasn't it? Jackfruit, yeah. yeah. First time having jackfruit, very nice. And uh, not easy to make it that way. No, because okay. The jackfruit is very sweet. Yeah. So they boil it, it, wasn't, and... it wasn't too sweet, it was very yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, and the egg was marinated and a little sweet. The egg so. also, they, they do something. Yeah, very nice. Lemon tea? Yeah, lemon tea. Yeah, lemon tea. Yeah. Which one's this? Basso. Basso. And this is rice. Yes. Come here to get some food in Jogjakarta. Yeah. Very good. So many of these little streets. Alright. <laughs>